Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, you're very welcome uh, to our morning worship service. Uh, this is our communion service, so make sure uh, we've got a little COVID communion cup, as we call them. Uh, we're just going to share communion uh, after after the sermon this morning. Uh, these are slightly easier to open, so if you haven't been with us before, you're very welcome. We're very international today. Not only have we one American family, but we've got three different American families with us this morning. So you're all uh, very welcome uh, to the proper proper mainland, as I say, which is, which is here. Uh, so uh, I hope and pray you enjoy your time of worship with us. But these little communion cups, just a wee bit of, uh, they've got a, a little plastic film at the top. I'm from Derry Street, London Derry Street. If I say film, I mean the plastic bit. Okay, not a movie. Um, so the little bit of bread is in under that. So when we come to the end, what we're going to do this week, when we bless, bless the bread and the wine, uh, we're going to keep this little cup until the actual bit where we come together and we share in the one bread and the one wine. And then we'll do it all together. Everybody happy with that? If you feel the first little bit off when it comes to the bread, and then the second little bit will get you the wine. All right. Well, it's grape juice. It's not. It's not real wine. Yeah. So that's just where we are on that. Um, today uh, we're looking, continuing to look at the theme through Luke, through different phrases, and today it's quite simply entitled "Do Not Be Afraid," and it comes from the gospel passage that we will use. Uh, when it comes to uh, the sermon. Uh, I just want to run through a few quick announcements. Uh, this week, the half past six prayer prayer time is running as normal. There is no prayer meeting on Wednesday. Uh, just, uh, I'll explain why in a wee moment, but uh, there's no prayer time on Wednesday, just Tuesday morning at half past six. The St. Mary group are still meeting on Mondays, so if you're part of that, or you want to be part of that, please, uh, they speak to somebody about that and also the exercise fitness class on Wednesday night is back up and on uh, with fitness so if you want uh, to uh, enjoy that please do so. Also Brian has a number of events planned uh, for August. Okay we're going to get a well deserved break this week and next week so enjoy your, enjoy your time away and thank you for holding the fort whilst uh, we were off. But uh, let's go hydro, Brian. You still got some places for that? Yeah. So if you want to join in, I actually announced this at the half nine service this morning. And it's a slightly uh, older congregation. So if you can squeeze yourself into a wetsuit, you don't pop a hip, you can join with everybody at Let's Go Hydro. If you don't know what it is, it's a big inflatable bouncy park on water just up and carried off. Uh, so uh, that's that. Uh, I think the cost is subsidised. It's £25 for a morning of fun and that includes your lunch as well. So please remember that. And then the camping out in the rectory fields for, for the youth group, uh, that is happening on the 26th of August. Also that weekend, uh, on the Sunday, we hope to have a Farage barbecue stroke picnic. After what will be this service, we'll just move to the rectory fields and we will have that at the weather, weather committee and we'll have that time uh, together uh, there. It sort of kickstart us back into September. I know it seems to be September is the new year for the church because everything starts up again after the summer. Now Salomon is here this morning, isn't he? Salomon, Salomon, could they have you home again from America? Something happened in the team running. I should have changed the sermon. But anyway, Salomon is home uh, and Salomon is uh, uh, running this Valley Lesson concert series. There's some flyers out in the foyer. Salmon, are you hanging about for coffee afterwards? Make sure you speak to Salmon if you want more information about it. And uh, he will be delighted just to point you in the right direction so you can pick up uh, your tickets and different things like that as well. Now, a good point. I want to thank uh, Valerie and Brian. They, they would take the stuff to the food bank every week. Uh, now, uh, at the minute they're looking for VHP milk, okay, uh, shaving foam, hand soap, sugar and sweet corn, those are specifics that they're running short of, so if you give to the food bank or you would like to give to the food bank, please bring some stuff that you can put in the foyer of the church and then it's taken, it's taken to the food bank every week. Um, food banks are actually under pressure at the moment, just with the current economic climate, so please do that as well. 
Already, the Luminate Fund, as I said, this is a fund for people who are struggling financially. They find it difficult to maybe pay some bills. Uh, I have to say, through the generosity of a lot of people in church, we have this fund. Okay, so if you know anybody who's struggling, please speak to me in, in com uh, confidentially, and that uh, we will try and help in whatever way we can uh, for what's happening at the moment. And I think that is most of the important announcements. Um, just, I just want to thank the church for faithfully praying. It just seems a bit sweet. Somebody asked, have we had a, a good week off? And it's been a strange old week because a number of our friends, most of you will know, uh, we've been praying for a, a lady called Siobhan and also uh, for Kerry. Sadly, Siobhan passed away yesterday. And then sadly, this morning, just before we came out of the church, Kerry passed away. So it's been a tough couple of days and a bit of a tough few days. I'm not saying for us as a family, but for them, for, for Joe and his family, and indeed for Robert and his family as well. So I want to thank you for your prayers, for these two amazing ladies. And, and uh, yeah, so if you can pray for the families uh, over these next few days, that would be greatly appreciated as well. We're just going to be silent for a moment uh, and then I want to pray this beautiful prayer over us together as a church. <coughs> Kindle in our hearts, Father, the same faith that impelled Abraham to set out from his home and to live as a pilgrim in a foreign land. As we, like him, look for the city that none but you can design and build, keep us watchful for your son's coming, that we may be found faithful stewards of all that you have entrusted to us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand together and sing our first hymn. If you wish, you can follow the hymn book. It's hymn 606, but the words will be on the screen as the deer pants for the Lord. Will you please stand?
through uh, the lyrics of some of the hymns and songs that we sing. And uh, these hymns were chosen away last week, uh, past the Sheila, and uh, it just makes me smile, especially uh, this morning when we got up and heard the news again uh, about our, uh, you know, about uh, Ruby's friend, that you see those words on the screen, and it says, you alone are my strength and my shield to you, alone may my spirit lead. And that's the God who we serve. <laughs> It's a God who gives us that strength. It's a God who gives us that joy through his love and mercy. And part of our worship here in, in Valley Lesson involves at the start of each service is setting our hearts right before God. If you're from uh, another uh, tradition or uh, another church, uh, in the Anglican church, this is simply called the prayer of confession. But I say this prayer is a very powerful prayer. It's a prayer in which you can rededicate your life to Christ at the start of the service, or perhaps even commit your life to Christ for the very first time. So we're going to be silent for a moment. Uh, we're going to just hear these words of Scripture, and then we're going to pray the prayer that will be indeed on the screen. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So we pray together, Almighty God. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and have walked in wrath and none. We, we are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in the newness of life to the glory of your name. And Almighty God, who forgives all who should repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, so uh, our uh, Bible reading today is going to be read by uh, Ryan. Thank you. The Bible reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 32 to 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those whose servants, whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready. Because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to you. Thank you, uh, Ryan, for reading us uh, that portion of Scripture. Uh, that portion of Scripture begins with a beautiful term of endearment to, to us from, from Jesus. And it's quite simply, it says, Do not be afraid, my little flock. And it's just a beautiful little phrase that sometimes we can overlook so uh, easily. And, and our next hymn, which we're going to stand and sing in a moment, is based on Psalm 23. When we think of sheep, this is one of the psalms that we always head for. Okay, Psalm 23, and so we're going to stand and sing, I will trust in you, you will. The Lord's my shepherd. <coughs>
were singing uh, that first verse. And as we sang, he will restore my soul. It was he will restore my audio vision. So anyway, but that's another uh, wonderful thing. Just let me pray for a moment, and then I want to share a, a few words uh, with you uh, on this passage uh, of Scripture. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and your promise to us all. And so we just pray now, Lord, that your words will sink deep into our hearts. Amen? Amen. As I've said, uh, the, the theme uh, and, and the songs and the passages of Scripture have been sort of set for us for this week. And indeed, uh, I just love that. It says, do not be afraid. No matter what we face in life uh, as, as human beings, we have this wonderful little verse and phrase, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, little flock. And as I see some young ones here, yeah, you are going to heckle me all the time, are you? Maybe not. But I love this phrase and this term of endearment. And it makes me think of a time whenever perhaps our children would have fallen over and hurt themselves. And the immediate thing that you would do is to gather them up, wrap your arms around them and just say, it's okay. It's okay. And I feel for us as a family that this passage of scripture is quite prophetic this morning. I feel uh, for, for Joe, he's been putting up what's in anyway, and indeed for Robert and their family, that this is a wonderful prophetic message this morning. And for perhaps someone here who is still has a heart broken with grief, Jesus is quite simply saying, do not be afraid, little flock. Do not be afraid. And this is just a beautiful start to the passage. A passage which really encourages us to think more about our faith, to think more about eternity than what is around us. And so, as Christians, and for those of us who have that personal relationship with Christ, this is a great passage for us to recalibrate, to perhaps rethink about where our priorities lie, perhaps to rethink about how we use the resources that God has given to us. And here again you see Jesus is spending time with his close friends and his family and he's instructing them as how to live their lives. Now over these past couple of days, uh, the, the, the Anglican Church, they were meeting in Lambeth, they were having a big conference and there, was only, there, and there was issues that are divisive in church. And as I read this and as I read through the colleague for this morning that takes us back to Abraham and the law that was handed down by Moses to the church, it, it, it makes me sort of wonder why we as human beings overcomplicate the simplicity of the gospel, the simplicity of the written word. Jesus here was speaking to people who knew what the law was. Because as young Jews, they would have had to have learned the four books of the Torah off, 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 off by heart. They knew what the actual laws were. They perhaps weren't keeping them right. They perhaps ne neglected some of them. But Jesus here was bringing life to the simple words of the law. And for us as Christians, we can, we can open the Bible and we can read it. We can read it like a novel. Some of us maybe want to read it like a fairy tale. And we don't get anything from it. Because we need Jesus to guide us. We need Jesus to guide us through the Holy Spirit as we read these words. Because Jesus gives life to the Word. It becomes the living Word. And in this passage of scripture, he's, he's, he's telling people, look, sell all your possessions and give them to a poor, store up treasures in heaven. Now, 
If you're thinking of leaving a big donation in the offer to box or out, still do it, don't worry about it. But this is really making us think about where our priorities lie. There's no harm in being wealthy, there's no harm in having a lot of resources. The harm comes when those resources and that love for money overtakes our love for God and for the promises that he has for us. I'm looking around here and I know there's many people here who have suffered the loss of loved ones. And when you suffer the loss of a loved one, it does refocus your heart and your mind on eternity as to what lies beyond this. It's lovely to see young babies in the church this morning and as they are starting out in life, we want to instill in them our beliefs and our thoughts. We don't want to frighten them into heaven. I've heard this passage of scripture preached on before and, 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 and it tries to scare the pants off people so as they will make a commitment to Christ. There is an element of that. There is a but. There is an or. But here for me and for you this morning, Jesus is saying, be ready, be compassionate, be passionate, and be committed to him. This little bit, and I shared, I shared this morning with, with, with the half nine congregation about being ready. Many, many years ago when I, when I did my basic training uh, for, uh, for the army, um, one of the weirdest things I ever remember, a couple of those things that sticks in my head, is when you went out to lie in the field, okay? Not just any field, but we call it when you were deployed into the field, when you were deployed to live out uh, for two or three or four days at a time. Uh, they said, uh, when you go to bed at night, or when you get down and when you get your wee shelter made and everything else, you get your wee sleeping bag and your roll mat rolled out and, and your room service order, doesn't work like that. Make sure you're ready to go. I thought, right? I was kind of hoping you'd get in your slip in your pajamas and slip in your nice wee sleeping bag and have a nice doze. But the thought, I'm being told to get in your sleeping bag with your boots on, that was just completely bewildering to me. I thought, why? But the whole reason is that you were ready to respond if the enemy came. You were ready and you were prepared. You had to get in that sleeping bag fully clothed with your weapon system. And you know what? It wasn't a comfortable sleep. I'm saying that, have you ever tried to sleep? I hope not, because they tried to sleep with Rosemary, but the police haven't. <laughs> the way she tosses and turns about in bed. But still, it's uncomfortable. You just don't go and put your wee sleeping bag down where you find a nice cozy spot. You put your sleeping bag in a certain formation that you protect each other. And there's a wonderful image here of, of, of Jesus saying, look, be ready for my return. Don't neglect what's happening in this life, but be ready. Keep your hearts and your minds focused on me. And there's just an amazing lesson in this. You know, this morning when, when actually, well, you know, yesterday when, when I went and sat in, in, in Joe Siobhan's house and, and spoke to him, and, uh, you know, Siobhan had a great sense of humour. And one of the best senses of humour is this. She was very, they were very devout Baptists. They were very involved in their local Baptist church. And they've got me leading the service. How crazy is that this week? Uh, and most of you know that Pastor David McMarsh was here uh, uh, just a few weeks back speaking of Compassion UK. Do you remember David? And, and David, David is our pastor. And, and David had actually dropped me a wee message to say, look, I'm going off on two weeks holiday. Everything should be okay. Famous last words. But just in case it's not, they would like, they would like me to do the service. So I thought, Siobhan, if she's, if she's watching now, you know, thanks, okay. But I always feel... When you go to the house of someone who had a deep faith in Christ, it makes it somewhat easier. Because you know that this is not the end for us as Christians. That we have a promise of eternal life. 
And when Jesus says in this, be ready for the Son of Man will return, he's returning to take those of us that are here on the earth, those of us that are perhaps that we're still alive, that we're, that we're not, and he's going to take us to be with him and those whom we love for eternity. In the business world, that we call the USP, the unique selling point, is that we have eternal life, that we have a life in him. The message translation uh, says this, it says, steep yourself in God's reality, God initiative, God provisions. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. That's a powerful message for this generation. Don't be afraid of missing out. You're my dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom himself. You know, Siobhan, uh, in, in, in January, spoke in her church about her cancer diagnosis and about the, the, the terminal diagnosis that she received. And I think we shared it on the church page, and I know some, a number of people listened to it. It was just amazing to listen to it. But I, I just sat out the back last night, out, out in the garden, and I was just listening to it again, just, just to hear her voice and, and to hear her words. And one of the things that stuck as I thought about this passage, as I thought about Christ returning for each one of us, as I thought about the simplicity of the gospel, is this. She was talking about us never being perfect in this life. Some of us are pretty close. But we can never be perfect in this life. And no matter how hard we try, no matter how much we do, we will never attain that perfection. But these are her words, and I had to write them down. It says, it's only when we get to heaven that the full, rich perfection will come upon us. Is that a wonderful promise? I, I just find that so amazing, that the full perfection of who we are will come upon us when we get to heaven. It doesn't mean that we have to be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly use. It means that we must not take our eyes off the mark or off the goal. Have any of you ever been afraid of sleeping in? Have you ever had to get up early for something? You set your alarm and then you don't sleep. I don't know if you're like me. I hate it. Especially when you're, my kids hate it when we're going on holiday. Okay? Because the running joke in our family is if it says on the, on the ticket, you have to be there at 9 o'clock for booking and dad will have us there at 6 a.m. Because I always like to be early. I like to be organized and I like to be ready. But sometimes when you set that alarm to get up early, you don't sleep because you're just waiting for it. You're just waiting for it. Or you look at it every 15 minutes, every half hour, and you're just waiting for it. I don't want any of you here this morning to sleep in. When you're faced with grief, when you're faced with sorrow, it brings a reality to it. Sometimes we can slip into our daily routine. And I don't want anybody here to sleep in. I want you to be ready. I want you to be suited and booted, not sleeping with my wife, but ready to go. Ready to go. And how do you do that? You just simply turn your life over to Christ. A simple prayer. You just pray and say, Lord, come into my life. If you can't get the proper words, lift the prayer book in front of you. Turn to one of the morning prayers and you will see that that beautiful prayer, one of the versions that we used at the start. Acknowledging your sin, acknowledging the things that you've done wrong and just simply saying, come Lord Jesus, come into my life. Renew it. 
Help me in this life to be ready for the next. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you uh, for your word this morning. Lord, we thank you for the directness of it. Lord, for the challenge to be ready. And so, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you will just focus our minds on you. Lord, as we focus our minds on you, Lord, that you will indeed continue to help us to help this community in which we live, or indeed the communities in which we live if we're visiting at this place this morning. Lord, just fuel that passion, Lord, for the love of our communities, Lord, our friends and our families. And so, Lord, as we as we thank you for the things that we have, for the things that we take for granted, Lord, we think of, of those people who are in need. Lord, those people who are struggling, Lord, in this current financial crisis. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will help us, Lord, to help them. Lord, we pray for all who work tirelessly in our food banks, Lord, in all ministries of care. Lord, that you will strengthen them, Lord, in this time, Lord, of sustained pressure. Lord, we pray for the world around us. Lord, as we hear of wars and rumors of wars, Lord, you say, sit up, take note, and listen. And so, Lord, we pray for the peacemakers. We pray for all who strive, Lord, to bring peace, Lord, to set up negotiations, Lord, and what seems to be just conflict after conflict. And so, Lord, we just want to pray indeed for ourselves and for our families, Lord, and for those who are in need. Lord, in a moment of silence, Lord, we're just going to take this time, Lord, just to bear our own hearts, Lord, before you. Lord, to lay our friends and our families at your throne. Lord, in your mercy. And so, Lord, as we prepare just to receive these simple emblems of bread and wine. Lord God, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, into this world. Lord, that we may have a life everlasting. Amen. I'm just going to invite you uh, to uh, stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene you say so. We believe. We believe in one God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of one being, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was in the by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified at the point of time. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And and this kingdom of the high we, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, can I just say, uh, we're going to share a communion together. This is a, a shorter form of a communion for this service. If you wish, you can follow some of the prayers uh, on page 207 uh, and then in the communion service. But the words will be on the screen. 
if I keep my foot in the proper place, okay? Uh, so, can I just say at the outset, if you're visiting with us from another church, you're very welcome to join with us in communion. This is not this is not the Church of Ireland table or any other denomination's table, but it's, a, it's quite simply called the Lord's table. So if you have a faith in Christ, you're very welcome to join with us. And it, it's, it's made slightly easier. You don't have to come to real. You just sit and you just uh, join here. If you don't have a little cup, if you, if, if, if you want, you can, you can have a cup. Uh, there's still some at the back. I'm sure uh, some of the wardens uh, will be able to sort you out with that. I'm just going to pray this beautiful prayer uh, from our prayer book. And it's called the Prayer of Humble Access. Let us pray. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in the manifold of great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls more sweet as most precious God, and that we may ever more dwell in him and be in us. Amen. I'm just going to invite you just to keep your cup intact until we come to the end of these prayers. And hopefully you will respond in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends, taking bread, you gave thanks. You broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, Give thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true wine. Holy Spirit, give our life. Come upon us now. I may this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Indeed, the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share the one bread. I invite you now just to receive the bread. So we pray together, our Father. Our Father, we are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. In just a moment, we're going to stand and sing our final song, There is a Redeemer. Uh, can I just invite you to join with us in the hall afterwards? We have coffee and, and biscuits. It's a good opportunity for me to speak. It's lovely this morning just hearing people being reacquainted after many years as uh, with people visiting with us. And so if you see somebody new, make sure you speak to them, welcome them. And there, as I said, there's plenty of coffee on the go down there in the hall. We're going to stand and uh, bring our service to a close by singing, There is a Redeemer.
Don't forget, once again, I'll be done in the hall.